Hijo. Um, okay, right. It's time for us to move on and on. So, um, what do we have next? We have. Well, what do we have? Who do we have? We have segment 58 is what we do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up our instructor pick and make sure that's the right one. We do have there. So it's Crystal. It's beginner dressmaking. Now, I know that dressmaking is uh, something that people are always interested in and everybody wants to have a go. I remember when we did our first one um, many years ago. He looked fabulous in a dress. I Absolutely. Have I've got the legs for it. What can I say? Um, um, he has two legs. Yes, <laughs> and they go all the way to the ground. Um, so this is fun and fabulous line work designs with tips and tricks. Uh, sorry, <laughs> wrong one. If you've ever wanted to try making a balloon dress, uh, hashtag <laughs> little bit tired. Uh, if you've ever wanted to try making a balloon dress but weren't sure where to begin, this is for you. Crystal will start at the top of a basket weave style dress, work her way down, offer suggestions and helpful tips, and answer any questions along the way. She almost thought she had a new class to teach there. <laughs> <laughs> With so, you rewriting it. What we'll do is please. Can you give a massive, warm Q corner welcome to the wonderful Crystal? Let's see how Crystal's audio is. The living out. room. There we go. Hell, we're in Crystal's <laughs> living room. Hello. You are. It's very clean for once, which is uh, which is a good reason to do this, right? Were you expecting <laughs> guests? Were you expecting uh, eight hundred guests with us as well, Crystal? Well, I'm in a townhouse, so it's a little squishy, but if we're shoulder to shoulder, I think we can make it work. Hey, we're all family, right? I think so. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to pass everybody over to you, into your capable hands, and we're going to sit in the in the back area and see if we can pick up some tips as well. So please, guys, enjoy Absolutely. and um, ask lots of questions to Crystal. Enjoy. Thank you, Crystal. Yes, please. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here, guys. Um, I'm going to do some more talking stuff during the actual making of the dress just so I can get through as much as possible since we only have an hour and a half. Uh, Dom and Keith, if any questions do come up, uh, feel free to actually just ask them in my ear or um, if you put them on the screen, that's great. I just might not see them because I'm going to try and focus straight on this. So uh, we're going to jump back and forth, uh, less intro right now and more working right now. If you look to the side here, I've got my dress form and I have at the very top a string of double pinch twists. Um, so I know that sometimes when you're making dresses, some people have used single pinch twist space or single pinch twist space or single pinch twist. Uh, I like the double pinch twist for a couple of reasons. And actually the main one is that if you happen to lose one, then you still have a second one there and you don't have to worry about, you know, doing anything like replacing that madly or wondering what's going to happen in the middle. Um, when we get to the end portion or the back side, when I'm starting to put things together with the little button back, then those will also be double pinch twists for the same reason, because there's nothing quite as frustrating as finishing the dress, getting to the back, you're trying to put your model into the dress and realizing that your pinch twists have all just deflated. So um, I have, like I said, double pinch twists and spacer bubbles. These are approximately an inch in diameter or in, uh, in length. Um, the size of the bubbles you're going to want to do is going to depend on the design that you're looking at. So if you're doing something that is color blocked or one color, then you can get away with slightly longer bubbles. Um, but boys, if you can pull up my Union Drac dress, I don't I didn't label anything, so hopefully that's easy enough to find. If you pull up the Union Jack dress, um, I did need a lot of tinier bubbles for that just because I was trying to get a lot more um, a lot more design work put in there. Perfect, thank you. That sounds great. In the meantime, let's go to the front over here while the boys are pulling that up. Um, and you'll notice that I've got little scraps of balloons pointed in here. I do a an even set of pinch twists. And that means that the very center set of pinch twists is going to be right down the middle of the sternum. So if you're doing something like a sweetheart neckline or anything that goes in towards that center line, um, you'll have one directly in the front and one straight down the back as well. And then everything is going to be lined up nicely versus having an odd number 
Sometimes that works if you're just doing straight across, but most of the time I just go um, with a, an even number just to make it easier for me. Now, that is my center one. Like I said, that's great if you're going to do things like uh, sweetheart necklines. The two on the side here, we're actually going to go ahead and do a, uh, a neckline that goes straight across. It's a little easier to start off with if you've never done a dress before. I can hear Glenla Valley in my, my, in my head saying, slow down, Crystal, you're talking way too fast. Let's try that a little bit. Um, and what I've got here are from the center, I'm moving over two sets of pinch twists in either direction. And those are going to take us about here. And that's a good space to have the highest part of the front of the dress. When you dress, you want to make sure that things do taper. If they taper under the armpit and down towards the back, so it's higher in the front, obviously, or in the back, that's a lot more comfortable for your models to wear. If you are doing the dress and it's going straight across, like you're just making a, a flat weave and putting it on like a tube, it's super uncomfy because if it's high enough to cover important bits over here, it's going to be really high in an armpit, um, which is not terribly comfortable in the best of times for fabric. So if you try and stick an entire balloon in there, that's a lot more uncomfortable that way. Now, these are going to be the parts of the front right over there. And I'm going to grab a couple of that's, we're going to do um, some color blocking here just to make that a little easier to follow along with. It's up to you when you do your design whether you want to do everything the same color or if you're going to do a different series of colors. It is easier to do verticals, one color, and then if you want to change colors, the horizontal lines are a lot easier to change since they go around. Um, but you can always break them off and put new colors in. It just makes it a little easier for what we're trying to do today. Now, I'm going to add our vertical bubble right there. And all I'm doing for this is taking the nozzle and I'm wrapping that in through the set of pinch twists, which is also a great reason to have that double pinch twist there. And locking that in once and pulling that behind here. Okay, we're going to grab a couple more and I'm going to get rid of these scraps. I do put the scraps in the centers um, usually whenever I am making a dress, just at the beginning, just to make it easier for myself. But once you know uh, where your centers are and where your high points are, you can get rid of that because you've got other ways of remembering things. Oh no, sorry, there's a Union Jack dress. Yeah, no, no, all good. Okay, perfect, thank you. And so while we're doing that, when you are making your shapes, once you figure out how long that is going to go over here, um, this is going to start bending down. And that's going to start making that taper that you're going to hear me say a lot of over this uh, the next few uh, minutes there. And at this point, we're going to start doing our vertical, or sorry, our horizontal lines. And so picking my first horizontal color, and if this is hard to see, let me know and I will try and rearrange things. Um, I've always found it tricky to try and show dresses because you've got audience, you've got back, there's lots of stuff going on. Um, these are all 160s, by the way. The models don't tend to like being bigger than they, are, than they have to be anyway. So the smaller the balloon that you can use for things, the better with everything. Uh, and the important things to know would be when you are making your little spacer bubbles for your diet, your verticals, keep those bubbles relatively small there. If you make a very big bubble and you're uh, joining the balloons together, you are going to have spaces and you don't want spaces since this is going to be clothing. And the point of clothing for the most part tends to be to you know, not show the skin behind it. Now. For this first row, I'm actually going to take my first uh, horizontal and I'm going to match that size of that top bubble here. So same size bubble here and I'm going to wrap this around. I usually lock it around one full time so it goes all the way around and then back across. 
And I'm going to do that again right here. Perfect, I can't sing, but that's cool. Um, so with the Union Jack dress, you can see that I put a lot more bubbles. There we go. A lot more bubbles in there than, um, than I do for one that doesn't need a design in there, just because you need to figure out, you're, you're thinking in pixels, essentially. And so the more detailed the design is, the more pixels you need in that. And so uh, you want it to be fine as possible, and uh, that's what happened with that. So thank you, guys. And we're going to keep on moving around. Um, if you know basket weave, that is pretty straightforward for the most part over here. Um, and we're going to all the way down to the end of that first row, just past where that last vertical balloon is. And then once we get more of the rhythm, I'll be able to talk a little freer with the other random things. When you finish that last vertical here, uh, instead of locking into a vertical bubble, since we do not have any more, we're going to mirror what happened over here. And we're going to take that last bubble, match that size up, and that's going to get locked straight into the original pinch twist from the neckline. I'm going to take that, I'm going to line that around my pinch twist a couple of times. Now, if I'm doing the same color for the bodice, sometimes I leave that vertical hanging down there if it's the same color, but in this case, it is not. So we're gonna get rid of this and tie that off because we do not want anything to deflate. And that is our first row, okay? We get two more of the coral balloons to go verticals over here. And same thing, I'm going to just wrap that right on in. And do the same thing right over there. And another yellow is going to go all the way across here. So just like we did before, I'm going to move down one set that does not have a vertical line. Lock that in here. And now because this is the bust area, um, what the sizing is is going to kind of depend on the model or if you're just making it on the dress form like that. Um, so what I am going to do for this line is just slightly make the bubbles, I'm going to do that to the same size, but I'm going to slightly make the front bubbles just a smidge wider um, just to accommodate for, for the chest region. So same size over here. And locking that in and just a little bit bigger. Uh, obviously, if the models, the models measurements are going to dictate what you're actually going to be doing in terms of sizes. But for the sake of this, I've got my dress form on the smallest size possible to get as much done as possible here. Now that I did not make quite as big as I should have. I'm going to undo that a little bit, get a little bit more air in there, and retwist that in. Okay. And getting to that last bubble right there, same thing. That's going to join straight into that neckline set of balloons right there. And we are going to get rid of the extra yellow. Okay, so this is gonna carry on with the same kind of pattern for the uh, the next little bit. So the next one at least is going to be the same thing. Um, I don't usually trim too, too much of it off right at this point. Sometimes I wait till the end and if I can just tuck them in afterwards and that's great. If I can see them from the bottom or from the outside, then at the end before the model goes in, then I'll go ahead and clean things up. Um, but for the sake of doing this, I'm going to leave that right there and get a couple more of these coral balloons in here. Now, um, I'm going to do the same thing, the same thing for this next row as well, a little bit larger again for that front panel. 
And while I'm doing that, a little about me, I have been doing dresses since I think about two, oh my gosh, what was, whatever the first Vegas year Tristan show was, I think. Um, and have loved doing them. I've actually been lucky enough to not only do dresses in Canada and across the States, but I've also made dresses in, um, in Italy and China and Australia and the UK. I actually made that while I was in the UK for a couple days right before Millennium Jam. And if nothing else, I know this is probably reiterated a million times already, but the balloon world has opened up so many avenues. And I have met some of my best friends doing balloons and been to some places that I probably never would have ever managed to go to without doing this. So I have been working for myself since about 2008. Um, I started doing balloons a few years prior to that. Before that, I was actually training as an actor. And this past year, or this year ago, um, kind of joined everything up together. So if you've not already seen it, if you have Netflix, you can find me uh, in a little cameo in a birthday party scene in Always Be My Maybe on there, which is pretty fun. Okay, we're going to get rid of this over here, tie that off, and I'm going to take a look, and already we're only a few rows in, but we already got a bit of a taper happening over there, uh, and that's going to make it a lot more comfortable to wear um, when you've got someone actually in it. So it's going to end up being probably about like that by the time we're done there. So I'm going to keep on going. If anyone has any questions, absolutely feel free to pipe up. Um, I'm going to grab one of these goldenrod balloons right now. And what you can do is just attach that wherever on the front and bring it on the other side where you put any of the, about your dress falling down on the dress form this way. And it'll help keep things up there and secure. Obviously you're not gonna use it as your neck piece, but for right now. Okay. And I don't know if anyone's mentioned anything I am wearing the tiara. I don't know if you saw that or not. I figured I have been in the house for 19 days now, and I've been wearing gym clothes for the entire duration of that. So this was a great reason to wear a sequin skirt. Shout out to Andrea Noel. <laughs> and to um, put some makeup on and, and put a tiara on. This has been sitting around downstairs for a very long time. And what better place or time to wear a tiara than for an online convention, right? So here we go. Same thing. Um, and that's partly why I was going to go ahead and do the talking part when I've already started since at this point, this does get a little bit more on the repetitive side. Now, I mentioned earlier about making the bubbles in the front bigger. I don't tend to do that on the sides because it doesn't ex necessarily expand out this way, but we are going to be expanding this way potentially. Um, so I generally make all of the movement with getting the bubbles bigger and smaller in that front section there and not so much on the sides of the dress. Uh, I'm going to touch on that more once we get past the bust into the waist area as well. So uh, just because we're following the shape of the mannequin right now, what I'm going to do is do the one more line and I'm going to match that same size. So I'm going to do the same size bubbles. Everything that these dresses are suggested, it's going to depend on your image, it depends on what the, if there's a theme to the shoe or the dress or the fashion show or what you have you. Uh, it's also going to depend, in my case, on what you have in your garage stock during the pandemic. And those are the colors I'm working with today. So we're going to make this go all the way around here. Uh, there are several other necklines. I just thought that for a beginner class, this is a great start. Um, my favorite is a sweetheart neckline. Uh, and that's going to be one that I usually use for most things. But... All right. Um, someone earlier texted when they saw a picture of my 
pre-show setup and ask about where I got these bins that my balloons are in. These are dollar store pop-up laundry bins for children. And they were like four bucks, I think. But they're fantastic. They actually fold up and go really, really flat. At the end, if someone can remind me, I will show you how flat they fold up and that you can actually twist them into like this little thing that's about this big. Um, and I take them when I travel as well, so doing a class or a competition and I'm making a dress or whatnot. And I need a pop-up bin. A couple of these come with me. Um, and they fold up so small and they're so light and they're wonderful and I love them. The other things that are great to have in mind when you are doing a dress, I, I mean, a dress form is great. I know some people like the adjust forms like I do because it, you have a bit more leeway with, uh, with the model sizes. Um, some prefer to have the French mannequins, which just mean that you need to have a model who is that size. Um, you can always add the dress form as well, but, uh, whatever, whatever you want to work with. Uh, I'm going to make this next row a smidge smaller from the front there, just to try to go and curve under the bust line now. When I'm doing dresses as well, I also have a little sketchbook. I'm going to take a moment in just a second. You might remember this, guys, if you're still there. If you can pull up, uh, I've got a, a, an orange and gold dress with circles. So I have, I don't know if you can see that. That is my design from uh, from Float last year. And Stephen Jones was wonderful enough to ask me to participate in the fashion show for the opening night. And so I always do a little quick sketch. And even if I don't follow everything exactly, and let's be honest, whenever we're trying to do balloon things, a lot of the times things do change. They, um, the balloons don't want to, you know, do something a certain way, or you get inspired by something else, or you run out of time, or what have you, and you need to adapt. But a sketchbook is a great idea to just jot things down. It's got circles on. It's a, uh, it's a, an orange dress with the circles around the circle collar. Very funny having working in your head, guys. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's uh, orange and gold. But hang on to that picture. No, sorry, it's an orange and gold dress. <laughs> While well, that one is up, that's a steampunk dress that I did a few years after Twist and Shout. And that was one of the very few times that I actually started my dress from the waist and moved down and up versus working from the top down. I know some people like going from the middle and working their way on either side. Um, it always makes me feel like I'm twisting upside down. If I'm starting here, going down is not a problem, but I'm trying to twist up and I feel like I'm doing myself. Um, so I do it occasionally if the design calls for it, but I really prefer working up to down, but uh, it's really, it's up to you however you work best. And I really should have labeled things, but uh, thank you. No, no, thank you. Oh, so I should have said that. Yeah, so from that sketch, that was what that. Um, and exactly what happened in the picture, but they almost never are. So anytime I work with photographers, they always say, like, what is the dress going to look like? And I'm always like, I have no idea. Um, and then I got to explain how balloons work and that I don't just have the balloon dress lying around three weeks before we shoot. So, yeah, that's another thing. If you do plan doing photo shoots or anything like that, when you are talking to or looking for them, um, I always ask for measurements. So not only the chest, waist, hips, I ask for bum as well, just in case. And whenever I'm doing the measurements, whatever the measurements are, I always add an extra inch to the dress. Uh, as we know, balloons do deflate and they do get smaller. And so even if I'm the day before, I usually go ahead and just make the, the balloon dress a smidge bigger. Um, so if it does deflate a little bit by the next day, we're still good. 
Now, we're going to be under the bus then. So again, we're going to go even further than that previous row and just keep on working across here. So yeah, you can always do whatever color combinations you want with things. You can switch things up. Um, find the shape of the style that really works for you. I do spend some time looking at at uh, actual clothing, so actual fabric dresses and things like that, and how styles work. Um, if we, if I see a really cool dress that a celebrity's got on, I always kind of screenshot that and put it away for a future time because it's got a really fun color or it's got a great skirt ruffle or something like that. And it's not going to fall exactly like fabric, but you can come up with some really fantastic things um, that sometimes work out better than fabric piece actually is. Okay. Are there any questions at all before I'm just rambling away to myself? No? Okay. Um... I have before, uh, depending on what the actual design is, sometimes it takes a really, really long time, but sometimes the uh, the dress that I made with the Union Jack on it, we didn't have a dress form. I was in the UK, for, in, sorry, in London for a couple of days, a dress form, but I had my model, and she was a gem, and we just build it directly on her, which was wonderful. But that's, <laughs> I think it's the only time I built it on the model. Um, but yeah, it was good. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, first, I'm going to take some more of the coral, and I'm actually going to change and do a little section of just coral under the bust line, okay? Um, if, I, if you don't have a dress form, my very first wearable piece was Twist and Shout. Oh my gosh, I can't remember which year it was. Um, but I, I made a, I don't know who remembers this, but I made a spaceship dress that abducted a cow. And I didn't have a dress form, so I built it on a couple of hotel pillows banded together with balloons. Um, I have heard of people doing the, the self-made mannequin thing where they take a t-shirt, duct tape it, cut it, stuff it, and then tape it up again. I've made a child's dress on a hotel bolster pillow, like the round one. Um, but I do think if you if you have the resources, I would absolutely recommend getting a dress form and and using. But but I have used pillows before. Not the best, but it would work. Very squeaky. It's the squeakiest dress you've ever, you're ever going to wear. Um, I have worn them myself as well. So it depends on what your model is comfortable with. So I've had models wearing pasties and full bottom, like full boy cut shorts underneath. Um, I've had them wearing just, yeah, pasties and just a thong. It's kind of what they, they're comfortable with. Um, I do say that it should either match their skin tone or match the color of the dress that you're making. And that way, if anything does pop, then it's not going to be quite as obvious that, there's something, uh, that there are no balloons there. But so that, that's a really good question there. Um, sometimes they do stick. I wore a Starweave dress um, at World few years back when I made a uh, an Ursula dress and, and I was at the end of a photo shoot and I was covered in star weave for you know an hour or two I think there so it's kind of fun um, 
but um absolutely yeah when you are if you're doing a full length dress for your model um i would go ahead and ask them not only the measurements that i mentioned before but also how tall they are um whether or not and if they are wearing uh, high heels what the height of the shoes are if you're doing all the way to the floor so shoulder to floor is a good measurement um as well okay so our at the very back over here this is that middle section that we were talking about and i mentioned that i do like to do a double pinch twist going all the way down so i am going to make a little tiny spacer bubble and double pinch twist okay i'm going to unlock the back of my dress here and i'm going to take the nozzle from that other balloon and wrap that in to the double pinch twist. Um, what side you want to work on and go around is going to depend on what way you what you, way you work when you're making a dress. Um, I've always gone left to right, so the tail end of my balloons are always going to end up on the left side over here. So my buttons, uh, the beginning of the buttons, are going to end up on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and get that wrapped back in. I am not going to take this off and get rid of that yet and i will tell you why in a little bit but for right now we're going to start going around again from that second uh, row of coral okay so i'm going to have a couple rows right over here um that is tapered pretty much as much as it's going to go but you can see that difference between the front of the dress and the back that's got a lot of space over here so arms are not going to be annoyed by having balloons right up into the armpit um and we're starting to get that that uh, curve of the waist in here as well. That's going to be a bit more prevalent once we get a few more rows of this coral in, okay? Okay. So whatever notes I've got over here. Um, right. Other things to take in mind when you are designing dresses. Uh, is it for a photo shoot or is it for a live event? If it is for a live event, do they have to worry about you have to worry about sitting down you can sit in them they're not they're not not comfortable um but if it's very tight when you stand up they will have wrinkles in the fabric lots of air quotes going on here so you'll just smooth them out okay. uh, so far i've not had any deflations right here which is great if you do find that you have lost a bubble or something along the way uh my recommendation is to not fix that yet wait till you get to the end and you finish the dress and you've gotten everything all taken care of um and then before the model gets in there then you can go repair things you don't want to have to spend half the time fixing everything as you can help it and then assumably you'll have had enough twists in the bubbles that you should only lose that one Balloon. Uh, if I do have a deflation, I can show you what I would do to fix that as well. Okay. All, right, so all the way over here. It is so much more of a different situation teaching on camera with no one in the room versus being in front of a classroom where you can actually read the room and things like that. So we're gonna just chat about random things. Um, here we go. All right, so we've got one more over here and Now, at the back, what I'm gonna do before I lock in that balloon here from that one all the way around to horizontally, I'm gonna go to the the button vertical. I'm gonna make another little tiny space to bubble. Uh, I don't make these very big at all because I don't want to have that space or any any gaps between the button and the, the bubble next to it. So I'm going to just make that very, very tiny. Get my other double pinch twist happening here. and I'm ready to go for the next one. This one, I'm going to 
squeeze a little bit closer, match that bubble size, roll that around, and again, I'm going to just leave this here. Okay, and that leads us to be ready to get another layer happening. So, nozzle's going to be wound around here. And let's keep going around. Okay, so we're still in the waist area, which means we're still going to be getting a little bit smaller just to accommodate for the mannequin's shape here. Okay, so this is the basis of the dress. That doesn't mean that once this, the, the base of it is done, that's it. You can add so many other things to that. Um, I got a bunch of dresses where there are collars or there are hip accents. There are sometimes uninflated accents as well. Um, guys, if you want to, you can throw up some of those images. I don't really have anything specific in mind. Um, but if you throw some up, I can talk about those as they come up. But, um, they've all tried to get a little, something a little different on there. I tend not to make the same thing more than once just because I want to challenge myself and have some, some fun options and have more portfolio pieces as well. So I try to get things a little different. And sometimes I've literally gone downstairs and looked at the, the uh, I've got a little wall of things where my clients can see them. And I'll go through and figure out what color I've not used as a predominant color in a dress before. And then the next one, I kind of focus on that color scheme. So it all just kind of varies there. Okay. So. When you are doing these, you can make these, look at how much time you've got, you can go with a shorter fitted dress, which is going to take the least amount of time because there's less balloon, there's less frill. Um, you could go longer, you can add frills, you can add lace, um, any number of things to them and kind of just figure out what your style is with things like that. What, what, if there is a theme that's going on, if there's an event that you've got in mind, to showcase one of these at, then obviously that will, uh, that can also have a play in what you want to be doing. And sometimes we've got some great model to photography groups. Um, I'm part of a few local model groups in Vancouver. And, and I've got met a lot of great people through there and I've got to do some really fun shit, um, make some good contacts. And it's a good way to join up with other local photographers makeup artist, hairstylist, um, and get together, work into portfolio pieces. It's all trade for that. And walk away some really fun shoots. And the fun thing is it's such a novelty to have a balloon dress that there are a lot of people who do want to add that to their portfolio. Just because it's a fun thing that, that not many people have in the area. Of course, it depends on your area, but over here, um, it's myself and I think one other gal who does dresses. And that's kind of it so far. If there are questions, please let me know. Um, the dog has gotten very, very bored of me and he's currently sleeping under the table, the table where the camera is. Maybe he can be able to come and say hi in a little bit. Okay. Perfect. I do not see anything. <laughs> Without a low back? Without a strapless back. Are, are, are you talking about, about not having it go quite as low? Okay, would love to answer the question. Um, in terms of 
strapless, you definitely don't have to do anything with that. Um, you can absolutely make the back higher. You can, if you want to just make it taper down just a little bit, just enough to get under the armpit and then go up from there, you can absolutely do that. Uh, I like showing off a lot of back if I can help it. So that's my preference. But if you want to take that slightly and bring that up across higher, then absolutely do that. And if that wasn't the I apologize. You can ask another one <laughs> again. Yes. So um, at the back, and once I got one or two more, then I can show you better there. But that's partly why I have not cut the ends off the balloons there. Uh, I used to, and then I would occasionally find that when I did that, the model would be slightly bigger or slightly smaller than they told me, or the balloons would have shrunk a little bit more because it got you know really warm or whatnot. And then I'd be scrambling a little bit because that piece of balloon that I'd cut off was the exact size to what that measurement was at that moment. So uh, I was in Australia visiting some friends and the lovely Donna Eden Cochran and I made a dress together and she started leaving all of these, what I kind of call like dinosaur spikes free at the back. And I was like, what are you doing? And she goes, well, that way, if you need to adjust the sizing, then, then that's available to do that. You don't have to worry about making them too big or too small. That entire length is there. So on the, the con side is that it will smack you in the face a number of times. So occasionally I will take that and just tuck that underneath the, um, the strap at the top. And that kind of keeps that out of the way a bit more. But it's such a good tip to have there. So thank you, Donna, for that. Um, now, in terms of getting models in and out of the dress, once the dress is complete, I will undo all of those, uh, all of the pinch or all of the the excess balloons from those pinch twists. Uh, and I do refer to that back line as the buttons. And sometimes people talk about sewing their models in and things like that. So um, if you hear that, that's what I'm talking about. And once it is undone to the point where the model could fit it over their hips and said it would be the generally the widest part there. Sometimes, depends on the situation, if you've got extra people with you or not. Um, sometimes they can step into the dress, use your shoulders or hold onto someone else's hands, step into the dress and then move that dress up and make sure it's in the right place. Um, so that's what I do a lot of the time. When you are putting the dress on the model, once you get the front part adjusted and that's all in place over here, uh, I generally, if I can find a helper, they're going to be standing in front. I will walk around to the back of the model. Uh, I'm going to put my hands right underneath the bust. I'm going to squeeze and pull all of the balloons all the way back. And then it's going to be the tightest that it possibly can be. Um, you want to get this really, really snug. It's going to look a lot better to that way and be a lot more fitted uh, and more comfortable, I think, than having a loose balloon dress on. And so having someone there to help you is pretty invaluable. I have done it where the model holds that like that, but everyone's arms get tired and um, a second person is a dream for that sort of thing. Once they are in that dress and you've got them all, uh, all cinched in with someone else's hands there, uh, at that point, depending on the dress style, I usually start working from the bottom and I will size that balloon, wrap that around the double pinch twist, snap the rest off, tie it into a knot, and then tuck the rest of the uh, excess tail into the dress itself. And then I'll work my way up and have a nice snug fit all the way to the top. Okay, hopefully that answered that. And that's partly why that, uh, that fourth measurement of around the bum I find super, super helpful. There was one dress that I had to basically redo the entire like butt down because it was not true to what um, what I was told and the photographer had to just sit there while I basically reconstructed half of the dress in the other room. Um, sometimes I say but it's the same measurement or whatever and I just you know, say you know humor me just let me know just figure out um, and then it's kind of for the greater good so that's why I'm doing
But okay, so I'm gonna get one more row. Uh, I have been cinching in tighter for the midsection. And just on the mannequin, that's about where it's gonna start coming out again. So very shortly, I will be making that dress a bit bigger. For the sake of time today, uh, we are doing a slimmer, more pencil cut kind of skirt. But I got something to show you afterwards as well. So that is grand. Okay. So we've got a couple more over here, and we're going to move on to our next color here. Now, if you've not made a dress before, I really hope that this is easy enough to follow. I am trying to move a little bit on the fashion side, just so I can try, and try to get dressed in in an hour and a half, which is a wee bit ambitious, but... Um, but the good news is you can always replay this back afterwards and listen to me talk even more, which is everyone's dream, I know. So everyone wins today. Here we are. Get. Now, I've got that bust line. I've got the, the yellow at the top. I've got that midsection here with the coral. And uh, I'm going to go back now, and we're going to do a combo of going back and forth between yellow and some goldenrod. I was sketching up some design options yesterday, and... I did the whole, what to, you know, what colors do I have that I can use during the pandemic? And these are what came up. So uh, I am going to make this first layer the same size as the rest of the coral here. And then I'm going to start slowly going bigger to accommodate for those hips. Now, uh, I believe I mentioned earlier that it is much easier to change colors going horizontally than vertically. And it is. This way you can just keep on color blocking and going all the way around. If you were to change the vertical, you can absolutely do that. Um, guys, if you can, I got a picture. There's there's two pictures of the same dress. Um, it's the green and gold one with the bustle. I don't know if you can pull those up. And... Sometimes I like to try and get some sort of ombre kind of gradient. There we go. Um, if you can take a look at, if you saw that, um, I did have the verticals changing colors partway through. And that was just the look that I was trying to go for with that. And I find that sometimes, sometimes you want the hard colors. You want those blocks in there. And sometimes you can see that um, I've got bits of the gold coming down. I've got bits of the green going into where the gold section is as well. And I, I feel like that just kind of softens it up a little bit. Um, which is the look that I was going for, which is why I did that. Thank you, boys. Okay, so as of yet, we've not had to actually replace a balloon midway, but we are going to have to do that shortly. So, let's throw that a little bit more. Okay. So if you get to the point where you are getting some little bumps in there from the air getting pushed down, um, or you're just running out of space and you're at the end of the tail or anything like that, uh, grab the color of whatever you happen to be doing. I take that nozzle end, and I'm going to take that nozzle, tuck it over the knot. Uh, the knot end of the balloon actually goes underneath where the twisted joint is. And I'm going to wrap that once around. Okay, leave that there for a second. Get rid of the balloon you're replacing. Give that a tie. And like I said earlier, I usually just leave the scraps there for right now. And because you've pulled that knot underneath and it's on the back side of the dress, you should not have an issue with either seeing the knot on the front or having that balloon being too loose over your eye. But it should be nice and snug now, okay? And then you just carry it. When I do have to replace things more often, I try to not go to the same joint every single time. So I'm going to try and taper that to, uh, to either side if I can help it. 
but it really depends on a case by case basis with this. Now, I found some, I've got some goldenrod as well, so I inflated some of that. So I'm actually going to be making this skirt with a goldenrod and yellow alternating patterns, too. So let me just get my next set of pink stick down the, down the uh, zipper area again. And... I'm hoping you guys are picking some stuff up and that I'm answering questions and I'm not just randomly talking to an empty room by myself. Um, Golden Rod, let's grab one of these guys. Okay. What I do like to do as well when I'm doing dresses, it's fun for my clients as well as myself. Um, I've actually got my iPad doing a time lapse right now. So once we are all done this and I have a moment, I am going to put that time lapse up online. And you're welcome to take a look at me. You can just watch me do this dress a whole lot faster than an actual in real life. So I am making these all slightly bigger. The difference here, though, is that while the hips are getting bigger, we're going out to the side, those are going to get a little bit on the wider side. Once I get to the front, you do not want, after it goes curves out here, curves in here, you don't want this to curve back out. So uh, right down the middle from my center line, I usually pick the four bubbles on either side of that center line. And once I get to that smallest part, I don't generally make those any bigger. So they might get they might get smaller depending, but I usually try and keep those four bubbles right in the center the same size for the rest of the dress. Um, and that way things are gonna stay flat over there and not not bulge out or or um, get concave on the inside. And then everything else on either side of that, I will make larger and smaller depending on where we are in the process. But those four in the middle, those are gonna stay. Okay, so got one more that's going to get a little on the bigger side, and then I'm going to match those next four just like that. Okay, and once you get after the four, then it's back to whatever it was that you were doing before, whether it was matching or in this case, we're making them slightly bigger. And again, this is getting to the end there, so I'm going to grab another golden rod. I'm going to replace that. Okay. Yeah, so um, sometimes it's, it's a distinctly warm color palette with this. Whenever I am picking colors, it's not just a matter of, you know, what do I have in stock, although it has got a, a lot to do with that, but um, it's the feel that you're wanting to go for as well. So sometimes it's a matter of warm tones versus cooler tones. Sometimes it's, you know, what gives me a mermaid feel, what gives me a, an icy feel. And I kind of figure things out from there, um, but it is going to vary. Another thing I wanted to mention, I'm just remembering random things right now, is currently it's all 160s. Occasionally, once I get past those, those hips, depending on the dress, I may move on to 260s or even 350s, depending on the style. Um, but for example, if I wanted to do a dress with chrome, um, let me get that. if I want to do a dress with chrome, and those are currently just in the 260 size, there are a couple of options there. One would be to double stuff. Uh, I know Glenn talked about that briefly the other day. I'm just going to get off camera for a second and pull out a balloon that I put somewhere. And if you can see that I've got a, got a 160 
inside of the chrome. Um, and then if you give it a little pull and do a little stretch inflation, that will help keep things good there. Uh, I do use a very, very tiny knitting needle to help do all of that. It is a US size one. Um, and it's fit for double stuffing things like that. The other way would be just to go ahead and take your plane to 60 and give that a good stretch and stretch inflate it like that. You're not going to get as much um, length out of that either, but um, if you need a little a little out of chrome in there, then that's a good option for sure. Okay, so this next one is going to be at that to the standard yellow and slightly bigger again over here. Any questions at all? Can't tell if I'm boring you or if you're enjoying this or anything like that. So, and afterwards I will absolutely come and read comments and things. But um, so strange being on camera. Here we go. We're gonna mask these up a little bit, and just again we're gonna go with those four front bubbles and make those the same size all the way down. Put 8, 24, 31, 2, 30, 3, 30. Okay, so I've got just half an hour left. How much time do I have? I had a totally different schedule before, so I'm, <laughs> I'm a little confused right now. There we go. So all the way around here. And we're going to find power hose through this and just see how much of a dress we can get during this time. All right, a little replacement action. And I'm just going to think out loud for one second. So, David started at 1, went to 2.30. If I started at 2.30, I'm going to 3.30, 4 o'clock. All right. Please go by really fast, guys. Okay. So I talked about accents earlier. Um, the green and gold dress you saw earlier had a bustle that was actually a removable one. I made that based on Sabina Kellner's loop weave tutorial from ages ago. Um, and I love the idea of doing that. So you can add something like a bustle. You can add to, um, to the collar area. I've got something, some stuff on my Instagram. You're all welcome to take a look, please do. Um, but then you can also go ahead and do things like adding jewels. If you are adding jewels, uh, E6000 is a fantastic adhesive to use. And I've got a bunch of that cooking around for whenever I want to do little jewels. I have a little bit of sparkle for things because who doesn't want a little bit of sparkle? <clears throat> so I'm just it off. Um, you can also, I've got some, um, little buttons that I'll be adding to this later on and of course you can always do more more balloon accents as well so um, any ruffles if you know how to do any lace then that's a great option too as well let's go a little bit wider over here every time I make a dress I feel like I spend a lot of time just stepping back and just looking at it um, which you need to do sometimes you need to just Take a moment and see how you feel. So I tend to think whenever I'm designing things, um, I usually end up either doing something that is more on the symmetrical side and everything is matching or on the absolute flip side of things. Um, everything is asymmetrical, but everything is still balanced. And I know it sounds a little proofy, but the best way I can describe that is it just feels it feels balanced um so not everything is in one side or you've got something on the top uh, top left and the bottom right um or it's kind of scattered on both but it has to to be balanced. and any any decorators and stuff like that, you all know this right uh, i've got to feel good <laughs> all right I have 
but you can all see this. I'm trying to not put my back or the mannequins back to you how you can. Okay, so on the off chance that I do not finish the entirety of this dress, because I did end up stopping to gesture wildly with my hands, um, I will finish it off camera and show you afterwards. And I'll post it in the, uh, on the Qualitex page for sure. All right, let's replace the rod here. I wrote down an entire page of things to make sure I mentioned that I'm pretty sure I got through all of them already, which may have been that whole Crystal, you talk too fast thing. Um, okay, here we go. All right, so I'm hoping to see a lot of dresses after this and attempts at things or even just, you know, trying the accents or the weave or anything like that. Um, absolutely ask me questions afterwards as well. And I've got a bunch of time lapses on my Instagram and Facebook pages, on my business pages, that you're welcome to take a look at and watch. And I know they're really, really fast, but uh, it's, it's kind of fun to, to see what the process is as well. Okay. I'm actually going to replace the, the, uh, the zipper balloon as well because that is running low. So same idea with that. I'm going to run that around here and get rid of this. That scrap I will actually cut off because that's going to be a tie point. Um, if you are curious about that, that is my matte balloon belt bayonet, which I absolutely adore. I do tend to break most things off with my fingers, but occasionally it's uh, it's just nice to have the, the belt cutter there. Uh, if you can't see my fingers as well, I you may notice I've got my fingers taped and that would be because I, I, I'm a face painter as well and so during heavy event times which is clearly not right now um, I will be wiping my hands constantly and and the, the powder from all the balloons and everything it's really really dry so skin starts cracking I'm trying to preemptively stop any of that and in case yes Good question. Um, depends on. So, I'm finding that <laughs> once it gets past the hips, um, you can. I I did put. Um, did I put a the the gray dress on in the in my folder, the one that was in the Qualitics calendar? Yes, that dress um, was very form fitted, uh, went all the way down. She could walk with little tiny baby steps. So if you want your model to do anything besides a little shuffle, which could be very cute, um, just I would probably start flaring out or widening about just past the hip area. Um, so it depends on like the build of your model as well too, right? But um, they're very they're very cute when they're snug. But if, if for a post photo shoot, fantastic, a lot of this kind of stuff going on but if you actually want them to walk or get up or down stairs that's a big one too um then i would start flaring out just about where the hip area is um don't flare it too fast that's something that i've done in the past and next thing you know it's all the way out here and it's not going down at all um so that's why stepping back actually is a good idea too then you can take a look and once you have what the, you know the height of your model that's going to help i usually you know be like okay well my model is Five six. I'm five three. I'll stand beside there, and I'll kind of gauge how how things are looking, and if I need to make it a little bit longer before I start going out a little bit wider, or if it should go straight down a little bit more first. Um, and that's all going to come as well with with practice. It's one of those things. Too, the tips are great 
Um, <laughs> but the time that you do it and suddenly you're like, oh, well, that was not a good move. You're not going to do that again either. But um, definitely good. But if it's something that they can just stand in and do a photo shoot for and that's what your, your end game is, then you can be a little snugger unless you've got like a specific they must sit down kind of idea for a picture. Um, but mobility is definitely something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I only have the one so far. So this is, I've got a, a star weave tutorial. Um, boys, if you've got my starstruck picture on there. So I've got a, uh, a tutorial on star weave out. Uh, I am just doing that independently right now. So if you are keen on learning how to do dresses with star weave instead of a basket weave, uh, send me a message and I can walk you through the steps with that. So, yeah, that just got released at Kristen Shut this year. So it's been very exciting. Um, first tutorial, what? <laughs> Yay! But no, it's been a it's been a fun little ride here. So I've been I've discovered Twist and Shout in 2011. My first convention ever was for face painting in 2010, uh, and it was amazing. And then discovered the balloon conventions as well. And honestly, it was like it was like coming home um, and finding people who also talk the same language as you and understood all like you know the crazy things that we all enjoy that that lay people might not um and when i first started doing conventions i told myself okay i will do one convention a year i'm going to alternate face painting and balloons and that only lasted about three years before i went to like i think the year after that i went to four in three months or something like that um but so wonderful if you've not been to an actual convention where you talk to people face to face Definitely recommending doing that. Um, it's it's just amazing, and I'm hoping that by the time next convention season rolls around, we're all gonna be allowed to hug again because that would be great. Okay. Finish this row right over there for a second. Okay, so right now we've got we've got the bust here. We've got that taper in for the waist, and we're coming back. Uh, skip that a little bit more. And my next row is actually going to be about the same size as the previous one. So we can just start going down a little bit and then start tapering off uh, inside there. So let's get our next starting point here. And we're on to goldenrod now. So while we're going around in a circle over here, um, I know that other instructors have mentioned this as well, but um, I think this is such a cool idea to just do an online convention for everyone and, and get everyone's spirits up. Um, I'm seeing people who aren't part of our industry online and they're talking about how bored they were. And I'm like, you know what? I have not had time to be bored at all <laughs> in the last little while. Between, you know, I, I finally had time to get back to my website that has literally been down since last January. Um, and then prepping for this, I'm actually also reorganizing my garage, which I'm super excited about. So once that is all done, I've got my pegboards all there for my balloon. There will be some social media pictures on that as well, because that's what we do these days. So that is my interaction, is so a uh, social media. <laughs> And as much as I try, the dog never actually has a full conversation with me back. There we go. 
point out, so you see notice that that front section right there, uh, um, all of the, the front four bubbles that I kept on saying to make sure that those are the same size, if you go to the side there, that is flat, right? I mean, you can see that curve heading with the hips, but that uh, tummy area is going to be flat, which is what those models do want. And if you don't want to dress yourself yet either, I don't know, I think you can do it. It's pretty fun. Definitely a squeaky kind of thing, um, but super good for photos. And then you you know, I think that's partly why I'm so adamant about the whole tapering under the armpits thing, because I've worn them before, and I know it's not nearly as comfortable when you're trying to fight this giant, you know, section of balloon underneath. minutes left really yeah. okay so um, what I am gonna want to do is finish this all the way at some point after. I don't, I'm gonna get all the way where I want to um, before we need to wrap but I do have a couple other things to show you first anyways so I'm gonna keep on going with this for a little while Normally, I leave my accessory to the end, um, and partly because I get all the, the actual dress on first, and the extra kind of like my reward, because <laughs> uh, that's the fun part, that's getting to play around with the little fun acts and piece of things like that, but I do also want to show you uh, what I can be doing at the same time. So let me do another couple of rows, and let's see how far we get with that first. Uh, in the meantime, if there are other questions or anything like that, please do let me know so I can try to get as many things answered as possible while I'm still on here. All right. I'm going to match this size as well. Just make that little shadow down. about 20 minutes what I want to do is I am going to finish this row I'm going to show you a couple of um, this is shrunk down a lot uh, show you a couple of options or some, some design uh, accessory kind of things for this dress that I had in mind and then show you something else and then get back to this is whatever time I've got left and whatever questions you may have as well. So let's just switch this over real quick. It's funny because there's a little bit of a lag on my screen, so I just watched myself get up from crouching about five seconds after I actually did. But honestly, the technology here has been super cool, and who else gets to like, connect people from all around the world like this? I guess this is wonderful. I'm so, so pleased that Qualitech asked me to be a part of all this. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave this for right now and like I said if I don't get to finish the actual dress I will finish that and then post it afterwards um, in the meantime what I want to show you is an option for straps now you can leave the dress strapless 
if you want, absolutely. Um, an option that I sometimes like to do is, I'm gonna grab three coral 160s. I'm just gonna match that to that top color. Um, I'm going to pull all the air out, which sometimes is called ribboning. And I'm gonna give that a little tie here. Okay, so I've got three balloons all tied together. And I am going to, I'm gonna match these on both sides. So I'm gonna take the knot end and I'm going to wrap that into the pinch twists that are on one side of the button. And I'll leave that there for a second. Then we got three more. Same thing, grab the tail ends. Give that a ribbon right here. And a tie. Losing one right there, perfect. Okay. And same thing on this side, I'm gonna move one over from the center. Okay. And from there, I'm going to grab one of those. <laughs> I'm gonna pull that over the shoulder and I'm going to connect that to Let's go here. And I'm going to connect that to one of the pinches at the front. Okay. Wrap that around those pinch twists. This is another good reason to have the double pinch. And leave that like that. Go to the back again. Pull another one over the shoulder. And I'm going to wrap that into the one off the side. And tuck that behind. And the third one make sure that's flat and wrap that into the other side here okay and then i'm going to match that on this side so perfect thank you <laughs> you're welcome all right, so I got 15 minutes. We're going to strap that in here. We're going to grab our second strap on this side. Tuck those behind. And our third one. Okay. In retrospect, I probably could have gone ahead and done two on each side and then skipped these guys just so it's a little further out but you figure things out there's nothing saying that you can't just take that out and undo it and just put two straps on instead um, so that's an option over here and what I wanted to show you if you have oh, I've done dresses before where I've added like little fantasy flower things like this that's got some floral wire inside there um, I did if you remember the balloon bikini photo shoot from a number of years back, it's falling apart now. But um, that was the bikini top that I was wearing for the, the photo shoot. Um, so that's an option for dresses as well. And, oh my gosh, um, years ago, guys, I don't know if you've got this picture, but um, there is one where I've got this uh, fantasy flower shoulder happening in the folder. But there's a much better version of this is literally years old right now. But this is one of my shoulder pieces that I really should get rid of because they do disintegrate. Um, but I attached that to, there we go, to my shoulder. And I had this fantasy flower shoulder um, area happening. Um, so lots of things you can do with accessories there. Thank you, guys. Um, what I want to do for this, I've got a fun little feel that I want to put in afterwards. I've made these little buttons years ago. They're just little... Um, you can see that they're two sixties in goldenrod, um, and they've got the little nozzle end on the one side here, which is great because I can take these and I want to find maybe maybe like over here, I think. 
and I can tuck that in and pull that through and wrap that nozzle back in again and have a little button. And I can match this on that side right down the middle over here, right over here. And I can do the same thing. Grab that nozzle, wrap that around the button, and pull that in. And I think it's just a fun way to incorporate some different techniques. There's some different textures that you can put on in here. Um, and like I said, every time I do a dress, I try and make it a little bit different than, whew, than a previous one that I've done. And so I think, I don't even remember why I made these. I found these when I was cleaning up the living room and I thought I should put these into one of my dresses. But they clearly weren't being used for something. Um, this one works now. I'm hoping, maybe. Did they both die? Um, my mic may have died, so I apologize for that. Oh, perfect. Okay, I can hear you still. Okay, great. So I'm gonna do that and get one more set in here. And if you've never made one of these guys before, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember if you showed me for the first time, but um, a piece of half inch PVC would be like your best friend doing these. All right, so that's some little buttons happening down there, which I think are super, super cute. Um, so that's an example of shoulder straps, an example of some accessories in front. I will finish this off and show you afterwards, but what I want to do right now. I've got 12 minutes. I'm going to move this guy over for a second. And I want to show you how I um, clean off the back. So this was my prep from yesterday, if you remember seeing my Instagram. And I left some of these down here. Uh, hopefully the camera can pick that up. Okay, so once you get to the part of the skirt where you are just done, and the length is what you want and everything like that, then you can go ahead and uh, and clean things up. So I've got just double pinch twist line along the end and I've chosen the purple violet to go down. And it's just a matter of that little spacer bubble, double pinch twist, I'm hoping you can see this, perfect. And for this dress, I'm going to move that other purple violet over, wrap this around, and get rid of the end here. Okay, and I'm gonna continue that on over here. Little face to bubble, double pinch twist. Sometimes at the uh, the hemline, it's great to put some lace in there, um, or you can add some little frills. Um, sometimes it's just a clean edge. It just kind of depends on what you are going for. Now, because of this, uh, I've got a couple things to show you here. One is that I did not leave all the dinosaur spikes on here because no one is going to be wearing this anyways. And I wanted to show you what the finished product looked like. So as you go down, you've got your line of double pinch twists. All of the tie points are there, but I've tucked them in. This is getting a little bit soft already because I made this yesterday and it's been, you know, warm in the house. Um, and that goes all the way down. Now, you might notice that I've got purple violet in all my verticals, but my middle two sections here, I've been matching the color that I've been using. The reason I do that is because occasionally, sometimes uh, sometimes when you're making it, sometimes when you're putting it on the model, it, it changes a little bit. The sizing changes, and instead of these smooth lines going down, you've got one that kind of like juts in and goes out and it doesn't quite match anymore. So I figured out, or I figured for myself, that if I make the verticals on the closest sides to the 
about the same color as the, the, the dress itself, then even if things get squished in a little bit or they have to go a little bit farther out, it's not going to be quite as noticeable. If it is just a, uh, a front photo show piece, not a big deal, but if they're walking around, if it's something that's a live event kind of deal, then you might want to have things a little on the cleaner side back there. So that is that. Um, so in that case, instead of just doing the double pinch twist with the blue, I'm going to go ahead and measure the purple violet and do my double pinch twist with that instead so the colors all match. Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'm, thank you, Edward. Um, I mentioned that uh, earlier I've got the Starweave tutorial for sale. Um, the Starweave template, if you look up, I've got a post in uh, Premium Balloon Tutorials, I think is the group. And um, in those pictures, I do have that Starweave template in there that you're welcome to take a look at. Um, I've also been sending the actual PDF to all the people that um were either in my class at twist and shut or have purchased the tutorial but yeah so let's clean that all up here and and earlier i was mentioning that you can do different accessories with things right um and so yesterday when i was doing my prep dress i went ahead and just finish this off for you guys so um instead of the neck that's going straight across i went with the sweetheart neckline so uh in the other in the other dress that we were making we had our our um, end points be at the side i kept that center point for this one and just like we tapered just like we tapered on the yellow dress um from side to side you're doing the same thing but it's just going to be a smaller section if that makes sense so um, I can go over this another time, <laughs> but for the sweetheart neckline, then you would start, you know, with just these two sections here for the highest point of the dress, and then slowly work your way down. Um, I did change a color out here as well because we were talking about how that just take a little bit more time because I'm like, this is not going to be during the class, and it's just a matter of breaking that off and changing that in, and organics are really big right now and I wanted to do something a little on the fun side and showcase some chrome and get those purples and the cooler selection of colors in there as well so this is definitely an option for something if you want to try doing something like that absolutely please do um, I'm gonna move this over here for a second I'm gonna pull this over here are there other questions at all I've got six minutes Oh, guys, make a girl blush. <laughs> All right. Well, in that case, I'm going to keep on just working on this for a little bit. If there's anything that people want to say or any any other random questions that have not already been answered that I can't answer or any questions in – oh, um, for the occasional people that have nothing to do with balloons whatsoever, I do have my little moose here. Uh, people do ask about him probably more than – about me most of the time uh, story with this guy is I found this little Canadian moose in the parking lot of a Canadian coffee shop um, years ago and then he came to twist and shut Vegas with me and he's come traveling with me ever since and literally will have people at convention ask about where moose is so he's right here he's been watching the entire thing Oh, good question. Um, because of the nature of balloons in general and the fact that we're using the thinnest balloons that we have, I make them as close as possible to when the deadline is. Um, sometimes, well, I was in China a few years back with, on one of Guido's projects and we did have freezers available so we were able to, um, you know, make 
a number of dresses and put them aside for for future. Um, but I always because I my deep freeze actually has food in it, which has turned out to be really really handy for this this last couple of weeks. Um, so I always try and make them as as close as possible without you know managing to cheat myself out of any time. Um, so hopefully, ooh, see, as I was talking, I managed to put pinch twist in the first so I did not want pinch twist. Um, so it's going to help when you figure out how what your speed is like for dresses. Uh, and then you know that, okay, uh, if I want to do a basic dress, I need this much time. And so I can start doing this at this point. Um, if you want to do something that's a bit fancier, sometimes it's nice to work on the accents or the things that aren't going to deflate quite as fast. So um, if I'm doing like more organic stuff, then I might inflate the larger rounds a little bit more ahead of time because they can sit a little bit longer versus the 160s. Um, I have a dress that I did not put a picture in the files where it's got these ruffles in the back. And I, so I made all of these little X weave um, squares to make these ruffles first. And then I made the dress because I knew that it was going to work out better that way in terms of, of the, the timing. Um, so if you make a couple of dresses and you kind of figure out what your speed is and go ahead and do that, there is, I believe I put a blue snowflake dress in there. I can't remember if I put a full one, but, um, I decided to make this, this uh, Caribbean blue dress and have like just ruffles and lace and everything. And I made the lace with clears because it was an ice princess and it took forever. Yes, that one. You can't see the full skirt in there, but... Um, it was, it was so much lace. It was so much lace with clear balloons, which was like the trickiest thing that I probably could have chosen to do in that time. And uh, it took forever. <laughs> but if I do like, if I do things with fantasy flowers as the accents, I'll do all of those first and then I'll make the dress. And then I can kind of like do those, you know, a week or two in advance if I want or whenever I've got time uh, and then get the time sensitive things done as close to the, the wire as possible. Hopefully that helps. We still okay? Are we we got a couple minutes. So um, I'm good. If no one has any questions, then uh, I hope you all got something out of this. If you've got questions, please ask. If you want to follow me on social media, this is me. I'm Face of Balloonza. Um, so at Face of Balloonza on, uh, on Instagram and on Facebook and everything like that. Um, Qualtech, thank you so much for having me in and asking me to be a part of this. Love doing it. Love making dresses. So it was a, a double treat to get to share share my love of dresses with you guys. Thank you very much, Crystal. So, really appreciate yeah. your time. I've never seen a dress made so fast. I don't even think at this stage in the convention I could even get dressed that fast. Never mind make a dress that well, fast. Well, I mean, you haven't slept in a week, so. <laughs> this is true. This yeah, is this true. one I will finish and I'll put this up. Um, the blue one, it took like the two and a half hours well, to make yesterday. Well, there we go, guys. Oh, Crystal's still with us. Oh, we've lost oh, her. Sorry, yeah, she's oh. still with us. Thank oh. you very much. Please <laughs> show your appreciation for, <laughs> for Crystal in the chat. I can see there's a lot of uh, golden nugget hearts out there for Crystal. <laughs> loads. Uh, there's absolutely loads there, Crystal. You want to have a dive on and have a read too. I threw a few of them up on the screen there as you were Thanks, working. Thanks, guys. So I thought, oh. when well, you're watching that back, you you know, I would hate for you to miss some of them ones. We had them actually, Aww. when we were working and watching things, we had them up on the screen too. Absolutely fantastic. Oh, God. Uh, we had to take, oh, had to thank take you a so couple much, of guys. calls with other instructors, getting ready for it. And I had them in the background, and I was kind of moving around so that I could have them in the background. Yeah. Because they're <laughs> beautiful, absolutely beautiful work. Oh, thank you so much, guys. So... Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Looking Everybody forward to seeing some pictures bye. posted of that one. My yep. pleasure. Remember, <laughs> use the hashtag, hashtag Qualitex, uh, sorry, Q Corner Convention um, for any of your work that you post on social media. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Crystal. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Bye.